Hi everyone, welcome to Fastbit Embedded Brain Academy. Today, we are going to explore how to program the STM32 microcontroller using Visual Studio Code. We'll start by setting up the necessary tools and software, then dive into coding and debugging. Let's get started. First, let's get started by downloading VS Code from the official website. Since I'm on Windows, I will download the version for my machine. Next, let's download STM32 CubeMX. Search for CubeMX in your browser, go to the ST official website, and then click on the Get Software icon. Select the latest software version. If you already have CubeMX, ensure that your software is upgraded to version 6.11.0 or above, because the CMake build system feature, which we will use in VS Code, is not available in older versions. If your software is older, please update it to the latest version. Accept the agreement, and you can either log in or download the software as a guest. Now, search for the STM32 Cube CLT tool and download the software just as you downloaded the Cube MX software. After downloading the software, proceed to install it. Begin by clicking on the downloaded VS Code file. You can leave the location and folder settings at their default values and click Next. If you require any additional tasks, such as creating a desktop icon, select them and then click Next. Great! VS Code is now installed. Next, extract the Cube MX zip file and run the installer. Choose Install for me, then accept the license terms and conditions. You can select the default options and proceed with the software installation. Finally, for the Cube CLT software, extract the zip file and run the application. Accept the agreement and proceed with the installation. After installing everything, open VS Code and click on the extensions icon. Search for the STM32 VS Code extension and click Install. Now you can see the STM32 extension icon here. After that, click on the Manage icon, then select Extension Settings. There, you will see three options. In the Project Creator path, add the path to the Cube MX executable, which is located in the program files. Next, under Cube CLT, add the Cube CLT folder path. Now the setup is ready. I hope you all have followed the course up to this point. Now, let's create a project to toggle the onboard LEDs of a development board. First, let's learn how to generate the code through STM32 CubeMX and import it into VS Code. Press the STM32 CubeMX icon under the extension icon. Then, under Project Manager, click on Launch STM32 CubeMX. Now, the CubeMX window will pop up. There, you can generate code by selecting a board, MCU, or from examples. I am using a custom-made Fastbit STM32 Nano board for experimentation, but you can use your desired board. If you are using an ST developed board, you can generate code by selecting the board selector option. As my board is not produced by ST, I am choosing the MCU selector. Under the commercial part number, I am typing the MCU name used in my board, which is STM32F303CCT6. 
You can see that there are only two MCUs left here, and I'm choosing the one which is on my board. Now, a pinout and configuration page will appear, and you can see a pinout view of the MCU. Here, you can initialize and configure the peripherals. I want to toggle the LEDs, so I need to check which pins of the MCU the LEDs are connected to. I will open the schematic diagram of the board. Here, you can see the schematic of the board. There are three onboard LEDs connected to PA1, PA2 and PA3 of the MCU. So, I need to configure these GPIOs as output states for toggling the LEDs. You can also rename the pins. If you use different board then you need to check to which pins the LEDs are connected to. If your board don't have a onboard LED then you need to connect then externally using the GPIO pins. You can also configure the clock here, but let's learn that in a different project. Now, we will name the code. Under project manager, give a project name and a desired project location in project location. For toolchain, select C make and then click on generate code. If it asks to download any firmware package, select yes. Now, it will take some time to download the packages and code. After the download, you can see the files in the location you specified earlier. Let's import it into VS Code. Open VS Code and select Import C Make Project to import the generated code. Go to the location where you saved the project and select the project folder. Now, import the project. A pop-up will appear asking what you want to do. Just select Open in this window or a new window to open the project. Now, you can see the project folder here. Just click yes. Yes. Under core, you can see includes and source. Under source, you can see the main. Open the file. In main, you can see the general initialization is done, like the HAL initialization and clock initialization. The structure is already given by the code generator. Our work is to alter the main function. Now, we will write a function and call it from the main function. I will write the function below GPIO in it. I will name the function LED underscore toggle. And I will use the HAL GPIO underscore toggle function. This function requires two parameters. One is the GPIO port and the other is the pin number. You know which pin we are toggling here, so we will update it. We will keep a delay of 100 milliseconds. Now, I will add the prototype for this function. and call the function from the main function. I will paste the function inside the while loop so the program continues. Now, the code is complete. On the bottom left, you can see a build icon. Press that to build the code. The build is completed with no errors. Now let's look how to program STM32 nano board. You can program an STM32 with different interface like serial wire debugging, JTAG, USB or UART. In this video, we will perform two methods, one is serial wire debug, or simply SWD, and the other is UART. First, we will program using the SWD method. For that, we require ST-Link hardware. What you need to do is connect the ST-Link hardware to the SWD pins of the nano board. There are mainly six pins in the SWD port. Connect them as shown in the diagram. Now, open the code, go to terminals, and click on run tasks. Now, select SWD to program. Check the terminal window. You can see the nano board's LEDs are toggling. Now, we will program the same code through UART bootloader mode. For this, you need a USB A to mini B cable. The nano board has an onboard USB to UART converter, so you don't require a separate USB to UART converter. Otherwise, you need a converter cable or module. Connect the USB cable to your host and the nano board. Now open the code and find task.json file under .vs code folder. In this script, search for tasks. 
You can see there are different tasks separated by commas. Select the first task, which is for SWD, copy it, and paste it below the SWD task. Make sure they are separated by commas. Now, open the device manager on your host. Check which port the board is connected to. In my case, it is connected to COM port 5. Back in tasks.json, edit the pasted section. Change the label to UART. In ARGS, change SWD to the port number you checked in the device manager, that is, COM5 in my case. Done. Now, we have to put the board in bootloader mode. In the user manual of the board, it is mentioned that we have to reset the board by pushing the reset button while holding the boot button. We will do that now, so the board is in bootloader mode. Now, go to the terminal. Here, you should see a UART option. Click that to run the code using UART mode. Now, reset the board to exit bootloader mode. You can see the board's LEDs toggling. The advantage of using the ST-Link hardware is that you can debug the code. So now let's see how to debug code using VS Code. Debugging is a crucial part of development that helps you find and fix errors in your code. With VS Code's built-in debugging tools, you can pause program execution, inspect variables and uh, you know step through your code line by line to understand its behavior and identify the issues. To debug the code you will need ST-Link hardware or your board should have an onboard ST-Link. Uh, without either of these you won't be able to debug the code. To demonstrate the variable reading feature, I will add a few more lines to the code. We will introduce variables to track the current toggling LED and its state. Let's define the LED types as LED blue, LED green and LED red. And we'll have two states off and on. I will create a structure for the LED status with structure members for the LED type and LED state. Let's declare a variable named current LED to keep track of the current LED. Next I will update the LED toggle function. We will start by initializing the current LED type as LED blue. After toggling the pin we will update the status of the pin in the LED state variable. This API will check the state of the pin. If the pin is set, the LED state will be on, otherwise it will be off. We will repeat these steps for other two LEDs as well. Let's build the code. Great, the code has been built successfully with no errors. Now connect your development board with the ST-Link hardware. Click on the run and debug icon. Then select build and debug to start debugging the code. You will notice that the pointer is pointing to the first line of the code which is HL underscore in it. On the left side, you will see a window displaying the variables. You can expand this section to view your categories, local, global, static, and registers. Under the global section, you can find the variables we specified in our code earlier, including the current variable. You will also see the current underscore LED type and state. Additionally, you can observe that the call stack is pointing to main. You can also add breakpoints in the code for more detailed debugging. Below that, you will see the peripheral section which displays the special function registers SFRs that we often encounter in our QBIDE debugger. At the top, you will find a set of seven icons designed for debugging tasks. The first icon is the reset icon, which allows you to reset the code to its initial state. Next is the continue icon, used to run the code from the current breakpoint. 
The step over icon lets you to execute the next line of code without entering any functions. The step into icon is used when you want to dive into a function to execute it line by line. If you have used the step into icon and wish to exit the current function, the step out icon will take you back to the line following the function call. The sixth icon is the restart icon where which restarts the program from the beginning. Finally, the disconnect icon is used to disconnect the debugger from the session. First, we will use the step over command, which will jump to the next line of code. Notice that the pointer moves to the next line each time we use it. Next, I will click on step into to enter the LED toggle function and examine what happens inside the function step by step. Keep an eye on the variable window. Initially, the global variable values are set to their default values. The next line will read the state of the pin and assign whether it is on or off to the variables. I will click on step over again to observe how the LED state and type change. Notice that LED state changes to the on state. We can also check peripherals window under GPIO port A in the ODR register. You will see that bit 1 is set indicating that port A pin number 1 is set. I will click step over again. Now notice that the LED type has changed to LED green. Next I will set a breakpoint on line 189. To set a breakpoint, simply click on the left side of the line number. Then I will use the continue command which resumes the execution of the code. Since my code is in a while loop, it should repeat the cycle. But because I have placed a breakpoint in the middle of the function, the program will stop at the breakpoint during the next cycle. You can now see that state of the blue LED is off whereas it was on previously. You can also observe that bit 1 in the ODR register is reset. Now I'll put another breakpoint on line number 194 and use continue again. Notice that the green LED is now off. This way you can use debugging tools to pause the code at any point and examine it.